Welcome back to another episode of What's Up Prof. Hello, Walter. Hi, Martin. Are you doing well? Yes, I think so. We have to get through this topic and we have to keep our emotions in check. That's it. So you and with everything these days, we have to keep our emotions in check because if we look at the news and we look at what's going on around us, we can get sucked in. So let's pray about that. Exactly. Our Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity once again. Lord, while we discuss these things, we ask you to enlighten our minds with the Holy Spirit that we can understand and internalize what we need from you. In Jesus' name, amen. But the Bible speaks about a time such as never was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I think we're really living in a time such as never was. It is so bad. One could never have expected to become this bad. It's blatantly apostate and evil. It's evil, yes. But there's a plan. Oh, yes. There's such a brilliant strategy behind this evil plan. Because it's going to wrap everybody into the folds of error. And the, the problem is that it's not open error. You're going to think it's the right side if and you're not studied. And you have to have uh, a deeper knowledge. And the Lord must give us discernment. Or else we're going to be in trouble. Those words deceive. And it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cut across the spectrum. No denomination. Let me make that quite plain. No denomination. In particular also our denomination is going to be free from this deception. Mm. That is true. And uh, let's put a disclaimer in right from the beginning. It is very easy to get sucked in and to climb onto a soapbox and say, this thing has gone far enough, and then to side with the wrong issue as a consequence. Remember again what we've said from the beginning. We are observers. Look at these things. Yes, be horrified, but in the right way. Ask yourself, where's this leading? Where's it going? And once we've discerned that, then we can be on our guard for the real danger that lurks behind the scenes. And we have to pray. We have to pray. Uh, that's so important what you've just explained to everybody. And we have to remind ourselves also. Yes, sometimes. because uh, you can easily get angry oh. and say, this has gone far enough. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start getting into things. <laughs> ah. And we were talking just before we came on. About Moses. Yes. Man, that guy had to have a lot of um, stamina <laughs> to go through the things. To deal with what he had to deal with. So we're going to talk about true and false revivals. But there's, there's a thread, an underlying thread that runs through it. A thread that, uh, let's say, say, can lead people to anger. To yeah. be angry about something and as a consequence, choose the pendulum that has swung too far. Yes. So yeah. one of the things that is really uh, riling up humanity is the woke issue. Mm. And it's so clever how it's done in schools so that it affects children. And how they secretly tell children that they are actually transgender and try and manipulate them in a certain direction. And of course, if parents that have got uh, half a brain left realize this, they can get exceedingly riled up and angry. And as a consequence, side with, a, with an issue that looks morally right, mm. but actually leads to death. That's a, and it, like you mentioned in the beginning, it cuts across denominations. Yes. Even faiths, actually. And the whole LGBTQ, oh, there's an I in there now. I'm yeah. still waiting for the whole alphabet to fit into it, but uh, we've got that now. Ooh, this whole LGBT, I, T, Q, T, P, T is involved in this, as it was in biblical times as well. Yes. 
There's nothing new under the sun. And uh, this type of issue led to tremendous retributive action in the past. If you take the tribe of Benjamin, mm. the entire tribe, except for 600 men, was wiped out as a consequence of this kind of thinking. It is, it is actually horrendous, right? Yeah. And the world is heading for a cataclysm. So let's see if we can put this together. Martin, I think you did a great job putting these uh, videos together. Let's just put a disclaimer in. Some of the things might be a little bit disturbing, but we've cut out the worst. We haven't put the worst in there because uh, uh, it's just too disgusting mm. for words. So we've cut out most of the, the worst stuff, yeah. right? And the, this, <laughs> the shocker is that it was actually on national TV. It's all national television. Yeah. It's because it, this, the, the whole of the population must be subjected to it. And another point, it's not just a nation here and a nation there. This is a universal issue. Mm -hmm. It is even an issue where people are prepared to go the length of nuclear war to protect certain values. True. Hmm? True. Interesting. That's exactly where we are heading. Yes, and it's shocking to see this. It's happening. shocking. And people are taking sides on moral issues and values. And eventually, they all have to come together. And I th think we're beginning to see a little glimmer of how it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant strategy. Let's give it to Satan that he is a brilliant strategist. Fortunately, he's only the second best strategist in the universe. And uh, luckily, we have a sure word that told us this is coming. This is coming. All right, let's, let's look at this. Well, here's an article from the 1st of March, and this happened in Australia. And this comedian, who is pretty transgender, it seems, made some shocking statements on national television that are really designed to shock. Mm. Now, some loved it, and some were disgusted by it. Now, we're not going to show everything that he said, but here is the comedian on the one side, and here is someone who definitely does not look too amused at what happened. All right, so viewers demand an apology after comedian makes rogue joke about Jesus on TV panel. We're not going to repeat that joke. It's too disgusting. But uh, we'll see what else he has to say. Comedian Ruben Kay has found himself in hot water after making a rogue joke about Jesus during a TV panel. So let's not go into that joke because it was disgusting. It pertained to Jesus being nailed to a cross, etc. and disgusting. Kay, who is best known for his off-color sense of humor and dry wit, shocked audiences in Australia with one pretty savage gag about the Son of God, who apparently is not a laughing matter. So, if you're a fan of The Big Man Upstairs, capitalized, that's pretty blasphemous, isn't it, wouldn't you say, You Martin? can see the trend of the, new, the news agency here, or the article that's being written. Yeah. It is also, actual, in actual fact, blasphemous. Blasphemous, yes. So, if you're a fan of The Big Man Upstairs or his kid... Maybe don't read on. You know, Martin, that's a disgusting way of talking about God the Father and God the Son, right? Mm. Actually, uh, it's pretty revolting. The whole idea why we are showing this is to show that there is a plan to disgust certain people. Exactly. This is done on purpose. It's done on purpose. Christians must be rallied. They must be riled up. They must become so angry that they will react like a Muslim would react if they said things like this about Muhammad. So there's a plan behind it. That's why we're discussing it. And, and, and just to bring it in here again, it's like you said in the beginning, we must be careful not to be drawn into this. Yes, we must be observers. What is the plan behind it? Not what is being said. Let's just say even Jesus isn't rising from this brutal slaying. 
Ali looked mortified and Harris burst out laughing. Two sides, Martin. Those that are mortified that something can be said on national television of this nature. And the other one thinks it's a great joke. And that, that, those are the two, the two sides. Moreover, many people watching from home thought it wasn't a laughing matter. Aussies raced to social media to slam LGBTIQ comic for his brutal take. I'm glad they put a little plus there, Martin. We're heading towards the whole alphabet. Etc. Etc. <laughs> I don't know what the etc. is going to be, but let's watch the news for details. Now, Martin, before I run into all kinds of adjectives, which I don't want to, because again, we're not going to climb on a soapbox. We're not going to take sides. We're looking at this issue. Not that we approve of it, no. definitely not. But we're not going to approve of it to the same degree as the rest of the world to jump into a fire from a frying pan. We're going to watch and see where this is heading. Yeah, so the part that we, we've just, I just put in a certain portion, just so that you can see what happened there, but the portions where he made the jokes is cut out. You cut that out. Good. We don't want to be nauseated by his disgusting sense of humor. Because queer people, LGBTQIA+, predate any idea of God. We're present in the animal kingdom. So I think it's hilarious when someone messages me and says, you have to accept Jesus' love or you will burn in hell. Let's just leave it there. He says he's a Jesus fan. Yeah. But in a very, very distorted way. So vulgar. Vulgar. Let's leave it there. All right. So why is the world looking at this diseased mindset? I'm telling you, Martin, they're looking at this diseased mindset to either embrace it or to be nauseated by it. Mm. And to be so nauseated by it that they will jump into the fire from the frying pan. Mm. There's going to be a pendulum swing reaction. And when it comes, it will be devastating. It will be the final event on this earth. And we'll see later that nations are taking sides. That's the thing. The, you will start seeing this is not going to be just religious uh, institutions. It will go into government. It will go into government. And the interesting thing, Martin, is the Bible tells us who will lead out. Mm -hmm. It's the second beast of Revelation that's going to lead out. Now, if you're looking at the second beast of Revelation, which is the United States of America, Protestant leadership in the entire world, and you look at what is happening there, you can be mortified, you can be horrified, and I can use a whole list of adjectives to describe it. Mm -hmm. You cannot even see that this nation can rise out of this and smack the pendulum to the other side, but it's going to. And when it does, all those other nations that are now ready to even go to nuclear war to protect their values will climb on board. Yeah. The United States is going to lead out, but only once the pendulum has swung. That's it, when it's ready. When it's ready. So let's see where it's heading. Here's the article in Mail Online. Students stage mass walkout after New Hampshire high school bans urinals and shared locker rooms amid row over separating bathrooms based on sex, not gender identity. They are so distorting reality that to blend the genders, they are taking out the urinals. And this is causing an uproar, of course. Okay, so boys aren't boys anymore and girls aren't girls anymore. Where's this heading? Somebody at some stage is going to say, what are we going to do? We have to stop this. That, <laughs> it's getting <laughs> ridiculous. It's getting ridiculous. So the protest started last Friday and lasted about 45 minutes with more than 150 students walking out of the Milford High School and Middle School in opposition to the new bathroom restrictions. 
Friday's demonstration comes after a lengthy debate by the Board of Education over whether to separate school bathrooms and locker rooms by sex, assigned at birth or by gender identity. That a school board can take time out to even discuss an issue like this seems rather frontal lobe distorted. It is actually, I mean... It's <laughs> ludicrous. Could you, could you imagine it 20 years ago? No, but there's no logic in this. So now you have to sit there, have board meetings and meetings to discuss, are we going to have a man on the one toilet and a woman on the other toilet? Or are we going to just... Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it, the point is, it's gone from the sublime to the ridiculous. And it's probably going to get worse. <laughs> well... I don't know whether it can get, but <laughs> well, maybe it can, yes, all right. <laughs> so the Boston Globe reported many students, especially the male students at the high school, expressed their concern. The tighter rules could lead to bathroom bottlenecks and detract from time in the classroom. 16-year-old transgender student Nico Romeri spoke at the school board meeting on February 6, urging to reject the ban. So now even the transgender boys are saying, uh, you know, let's keep it the way it was. He expressed his concerns that the policies could have a negative impact on the mental health of the district's LGBTQ, the, he left out an I. I and a plus. And a plus, yes, students. He said he and other queer students just wanted to be treated the same as cisgender high school students. Okay, now you have to explain what a cis gene well, is. Well, trans is the opposite, cis is the same. Okay, so if you're a cis... If you're a cis gender, then you are what you are. I would am, I, am, I, am, I, am what I am, or am I what I was born, or am I what I think I am? You're probably what you were born. Okay. Yes. Now, that's the terrible so thing. Th so that's when I identify with what I was born. Do you identify as a male, Martin? Yes. <laughs> you, you identify as a male? What's yes. wrong with you? <laughs> Where were you born? A male. A male? <laughs> yes. Oh, I feel so sorry for you, Martin. <laughs> so let's just see how these people argue. They're arguing about, let's just explain it a little bit. They're arguing about the fact that they want to uh, appoint leadership in the school. Now, the one that they're claiming is best suited to be involved in the leadership as president or whatever of the school is very qualified, but unfortunately, he was born male and thinks he's a male. You know, if he at least thought he wasn't the male, maybe he would be better qualified in the time that we are living in. He would have been, yes, and especially in this case. So let's just see how they think. I believe that Mr. DeLeo would make an excellent president. However, I feel that electing the only cis white male on this board, president of this district, sends the wrong message to our community. A message that is contrary to what we as a board have been trying to accomplish. I think that it's important that we practice what we preach and that our words have strength when they are spoken. Yeah. Well, th the truth is we all know your heart is in the right spot. Yes. Martin, if you were qualified to be the president of that school, but you were born male and identify as a male, that would send the wrong message. You see, Unfortunately, you cannot have the job. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, well... You know what? We've had similar situations in our country for a long time. They call it affirmative action. Yes. And I have no problem with anybody that's qualified to do a job, to do it. In the same with sport, if you're qualified, if you are the best, then you must be there, whatever it is. But to put somebody there because of a political, political issue. correctness. It's always been wrong, and I don't think it's biblical. All right, but that's the way society thinks. So if you want to send a message that you want to be inclusive, then it's best not to employ someone who 
doesn't have the mindset of that inclusiveness. That's the thing. Let's put it that way. Yeah. All right, so this is just to show how far the pendulum has swung mm -hmm. to the left. Yeah. Now, what will the eventual reaction be of those on the right? Because you cannot separate this from the religious issue because it is a moral issue. That is the whole thing. It's going to start riling up the people that's going to swing the pendulum. Now, when we talk about religion, we're talking about, in the United States, for example, it will be evangelicalism. If you're talking about Russia, it will be orthodoxism. If you're talking about Rome and Italy, it will be Catholicism. And that's important to realize. Yes, and if you're talking about other nations, it might be a mix of them all. Our country will be the conservative and char charismatic churches. Correct. And if you go to Eastern countries, it will be Buddhist and Sikh or Muslim or whatever it is. But religion is going to play the ultimate role. All right. So let's, let's just sum this up. It's a moral issue. And uh, religion is deeply involved in it. So you have the LGBTIQ plus movement involved in this. Then you must have the sports world involved. Mm. Because sport really is also a religion, Martin. Yes. It's a religion. We talked about it. It's a religious service that takes place. And it's uh, the enacting of the Gilgamesh epic. But let's leave it at that. But religion is involved. It's always interesting to me when two boxers climb into the ring make the sign of the cross and pray to God to help them to bash the other one to smithereens. And uh, eventually when one wins, he gives praise to God for having beaten the other one to smithereens. It must be very disheartening for the one that has lost. His, his prayer line is not as <laughs> effective as the other ones. And the same in sports. Whether it's a Super Bowl or whatever it is, people will be praying that they might be the winners so that the other one can be the loser. Yeah. Well, well, I had a question from young persons the other day, and they asked, um, but what about God-given talent? Doesn't God want you to use your talent to glorify Him? And it made me think, and I said, okay, the problem is, in whose eyes is it a talent? Yes. Because... There are talents that God does not want you to have. So who says that if you are good in something, that it is a God-given talent? Uh, for that particular purpose, you could have that talent for something else. So you have to discern through what the Bible says Correct. to see if it fits into what God wants you to do. You know, when you look at things like... Uh, those movies where they show, let's say, uh, mentally challenged and disabled people in a race, and one falls, and everybody rallies round, picks that one up, and they all go through the winning line. Then the people cheer like crazy because that is 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 such a kind gesture. It is, but you don't find that in a Super Bowl. Somebody has to win, right? So, it, it it can almost if you like I, if I take out from what you're saying, it can be in a certain er area that the way it's being done will define if it is yes for God or against God. All right, so let's have a look at how religion becomes involved in this thing. Now we're we're entering into the realm of where people are making decisions based on their religious convictions. And sports people are saying, I don't want to go along with this agenda. It's contrary to my religion. Let's, let's watch. NFL hockey player Ivan Pravarov from the Philadelphia Flyers declined to wear a pride jersey. Well, why? Let's listen. I respect everybody's choices. My choice is to stay true to myself and my religion. That's all I'm going to say. How, how do you feel about 
Any, uh, like I said, that's all I'm going to comment on that. Um, if you have any hockey questions, I would let, I would answer those. It sounds reasonable enough, right? Well, the radical woke mob is up in arms. They're furious. This is not good enough. Hockey is for everyone, dot, 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 unless, unless you don't agree with gay rights is not the phrasing of this. You're either in this or you're not. And one last point. Nothing scares me more than any human being who says, I'm not doing this because of my religious beliefs. Because when you looked at people's lives, you normally say that publicly, you'd throw up at what you saw. You would throw up at what you saw. And I have seen that a million times in a lot of different ways. So don't, don't give me that. Martin, was the man angry? Oh, yes. Why? Because that star should have identified with the LGBTQI plus movement, right? You see, he, he didn't show any acknowledgement or sympathy for them. And, and therefore, he was riled up. So now, the contrary to that, we didn't show that, but there was somebody who was riled up about what the commentator was saying and saying, well, if you say that, then I want to throw up. Yeah, that's exactly the, the same um, commenta okay. uh, news agency. Commentator. So we have two groups that want to throw up. The one says, if you don't go along with this, I want to throw up. The other one says, if you go along with this, I want to throw up. Do we have two sides? Yes. And yeah. Directly opposed. And on which side is the religious component? On the, the conservative right side. Ah, yes. Okay. Pendulum? Mm -hmm. Swing. You remember, yeah. we showed the, the prayer that was done on news TV. Now, I wonder what this person that w said he wants to throw up say, would have said about that prayer. Yes. See, this is directly opposing each other. Okay, but there's another little mix in there because Satan also has a gray area. He could have complete liberals also attaching to yes. the religious side. Well, and we'll look at that I just now. I just want to <laughs> climb onto what you've just said. Satan has a gray area, yes. but not God. God doesn't have a gray area. We he, said that last time in Mahanaim. That's it. People must remember that there's a black and a white with God. But there's a gray area with Satan. There's a gray area. Right, let's get a little bit closer to the churches. Here we have an article in The Guardian. The Church of England to consider use of a gender-neutral terms for God. So the Church of England is considering whether to stop referring to God as He after priests ask to be allowed to use gender-neutral terms instead. So the Right Reverend Dr. Michael Ipgrave, Bishop of Lichfeld and Vice Chair of the Liturgical Commission responsible for the matter, said the Church had been exploring the use of gendered language in relation to God for several years. It is unclear what would replace the term Our Father in the Lord's Prayer, the central Christian prayer that Jesus is said to have instructed his followers to say together, down the generations. Just to say that said to have places doubt on the veracity of whether Jesus actually did it or not. Exactly. I, I, I despise this kind of language, but I'm not going to climb onto a soapbox because I'm looking at where this is heading. Is it now in the churches? Yes, oh, for sure. Every church, whether you, we, we've shown it so many times. If you go to Europe, in the European churches, whether it be in Germany, whether it be wherever. They wanted to bring out a gender-neutral Bible. Yes. So conservative critics have hit back at the possibility of changes, with the Reverend Dr. Ian Paul telling The Telegraph, that they would represent an abandonment of the church's own doctrine. The fact that God is called Father can't be substituted by Mother without changing meaning, nor can it be gender neutralized to parent without loss of meaning. Are there two opinions? Once again, two direct opposites. Two direct opposites. And the pendulum is going to swing from the liberal to the conservative yeah. because 
Thinking people will be horrified at what is happening. Nations will be horrified at what is happening. Nations will be prepared to go to nuclear war rather than accept this. Well, if you think and if you, if you use it as we've always mentioned, the king of the north against the king of the south, if and you have to have it in a spiritual, uh, spiritual form, because if it's literal, then you can't apply this. You won't understand what's going on. And this is secularism, king of the south. So this, ever since 1798, secularism, the king of the south has been pushing, pushing. against it. And now the pendulum is going to swing. And it's interesting that the Bible says that when the king of the north finally takes over, the military is also involved. Because he comes with horses That's and it. with chariots and with everything, even militarily. Martin, this is beautiful fulfillment of prophecy. Let's watch where this is going. So now let's bring the nations in. Let's listen to what Putin has to say. And uh, he speaks Russian, of course, so you'll have to read what he says. And uh, it starts off here, they lie constantly, pervert historical facts, do not stop attacks on our culture. What's he worried about? Let's look at it. Извращают исторические факты, не прекращают нападки на нашу культуру, на русскую православную церковь, другие традиционные религиозные организации нашей страны. Посмотрите, что они делают со своими собственными народами. Разрушение семьи, культурной и национальной идентичности, извращение, издевательство над, над детьми вплоть до педофилии объявляются нормой, нормой их жизни. А священнослужители, священников принуждают создавать однополые браки, с ними пускать что то и делают. Что здесь хочется сказать? Взрослые люди имеют право жить, как хотят. Мы к этому так и относились в России, и всегда к этому будем так относиться. Никто в частную жизнь не вторгается, и мы не собираемся этого делать. Но хочется им сказать, ну посмотрите, извините меня, священное писание, главные книги всех других мировых религий. Там все сказано. В том числе то, что семья – это союз мужчины и женщины. Священные тексты подвергаются сейчас сомнению. Но вот, как стало известно, англиканская церковь, например, планирует, планирует, правда, пока только еще, рассмотреть идею гендерно-нейтрального Бога. Что скажет? Прости, Господи. Не ведают, что творят. Миллионы людей на Западе понимают, что их ведут к настоящей духовной катастрофе. Элиты, ну, прямо надо сказать, просто сходят с ума, и это, похоже, уже не лечится. Но это их проблема, как я уже сказал. А мы обязаны защитить наших детей. И мы сделаем это, защитим наших детей от деградации. So here Putin is summing up the entire problem. Of the West. Of the West. And he's saying everything goes in the West. Pedophiles are the norm. Yeah. Male female distinctions are being removed. The holy scriptures are being laid aside. Every religion in the world has a holy book. Just have a look at them. They will all condemn what's happening now. We have to protect these norms. We have to protect our families. We don't want to be invasive in your personal life, but we have to protect the norms and the values. And at the moment, if you look at the war in the Ukraine mm. and how the West is reacting to it, sending weapons and sending tanks and sending probably aircraft in the future and yeah. escalating yes. the issue and pushing the issue. Martin, this is part of the plan. It is. And if you, if you have to put these two, Ukraine and Russia, at this stage into the picture of North and South, King of the North, King of the South. Correct. You've got Russia as King of the North because it's religious and this push <laughs> from the South. 
from Ukraine. But remember, Russia is not the king of the north. No, it's exactly. Let's make it quite plain. Russia is not the king of the north. The king of the north is the papacy and it's using military power to get the pendulum to swing. Let's make this quite clear in, a, in, a, in, the, in the example. If you take Trump, he was accused of being pro-Russian. Yes. And uh, Biden made a speech in Poland recently, which was like a cry for war. Mm. He made a war cry. He was like a general saying, let's take the sword and smash them to smithereens. Yeah. Mm. There are people in the Republican Party on the conservative side who say, we must stop this. We must stop giving all these yeah. weapons to the Ukraine. So there's an anti-war lobby, and it's largely with the right. And it's the actually... It's the other way around as it normally Normally, is. normally, like the Iraq and every other war, it was... The <laughs> other way around. Now it's the opposite. And it's the left that's pushing for the war. Yeah. This is a brilliant, brilliant strategy. And Trump is on record as so, of saying that if he should become the president, this war would stop in one day. Okay. Mm. Why? Because he would say, you know what, Putin, you're absolutely right. This nonsense has got to stop. Yeah. Martin, what if you then have a revolution of the right and the whole system is swung to the conservative religious side? Now, all we need now is a powerful religious mix into the movement mm. and the West and the East could unite on an issue yeah. and they could say finally the West got it and we can work together with them. But the United States must lead out. That's the thing. That is why a so, group in the United States must come to power that will reinforce Christian values. Abs absolutely. And we, we're not sure who that might be. It might be Trump. It might be someone else. But Definitely, it's that going, is what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. And that's how the East and the West ideologically are going to come together. Because Putin has quite plainly said, this is our stand. And here we stand and we will defend this even if we have to bomb you to smithereens. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is the military involved? Oh, <laughs> completely. Is religion involved? Oh, yeah. Look, look at it. it. There's no doubt. So there must be a movement in the West that will move towards the conservative side. Is it happening in Europe? Yes. Okay. Here's the article from January. Italy's Maloney, fourth in list of world's most popular leaders. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney has an approval rating of 48%, the fourth highest amongst the 22 world leaders monitored by Morning Consult, a US-based global decision intelligence company. So the popularity of the family norms, the straight thinking, the cis thinking, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. gaining ascendancy. At the moment, they feel trampled and they're going to rise. Yeah. Yeah. Another article, The Times, rewards Maloney. She went from being a danger to the most popular leader in the EU. The Prime Minister, Giorgia Maloney, has gone from being considered a danger to becoming the most popular leader in the European Union. This is what the new newspaper, The Times, wrote when examining the first 100 days of her government since last October's elections. The British newspaper recalled that Maloney's major detractors depicted her as a danger both for Italy and for the European continent, placing particular emphasis on the references to fascist periods by members of the Brothers of Italy. But what she really said was, we need to get back to family values, yeah. we need to get back to religion, yeah. and family. she wants to keep rest and serve God. Family, God, and country. And now, just interesting, look at wh what happened. It was an outcry that she's this bad person and everything. Now she's one of the, the most popular leader in Europe. All right, take Poland. Yeah. 
Poland is on the same track. Interesting, if you take Croatia, yeah. they just strengthened their Sunday legislation. Exactly, a very strong. And the European um, Sunday Alliance, that is also gaining ground in all European countries. The pendulum is swinging, Martin. What about Macron? He's on his way out, it seems. Yes. We, we'll have to look. But remember, he's just played a role because he's <laughs> Jesuit trained. Oh, they're all, all, the they're uh, all actors. They're yes. all actors. Now, we're going to jump back to the year 2008, where the so-called father of the religious movement in the United States, Rick Warren, made a prediction. Now, that prediction is very biblical mm -hmm. because the Bible says that that is what will happen. Now, in 2008, it seemed improbable. Yes, it did. Today, it looks even more improbable, but it is behind the scenes highly probable That's that it's thing. going to happen. From what we've shown and what we... Because most of these things are not very popular in the news. If you don't search for all of this that we've shown in the recent um, sh uh, slideshow, it's not that obvious. No, you have to look for it. You have, to, you have to discern it through the eye of prophecy. Otherwise, you'll miss it. That's the thing. And so all of a sudden, when this will happen, it will be, oh, okay, here it goes. Here it goes. All right. And people will have been manipulated to think in a certain direction. Let's listen to what Rick Warren said in 2008. I understand that the future of the world is not secularism. It is religious pluralism. You may not like that, but you're going to have to deal with it. The world is becoming more religious, not less. The myth that as education rises, religion would go down, is that literally a myth? They affect not millions of people, but billions of people. Pandemic diseases, extreme poverty, illiteracy, corruption, global warming, spiritual emptiness. We cannot solve these problems without involving people of faith and their religious institutions. You can't talk community development without talking about churches and mosques and temples and synagogues. You just can't talk about it because they are the community. So my challenge uh, to you is, can we not all get along? Can we not just work together? I don't have to share your motivation, and you don't have to share mine for us to work on things like poverty, disease, and illiteracy, and things like that. Frankly, I don't care why you do good, as long as you do good. Martin, at what occasion was he speaking? What was the backdrop? The World Economic Forum. Ah, are they involved? It's amazing. Those days, you didn't actually take notice. <laughs> I'm sure everybody will take notice where this happens now. Now, the World Economic Forum, aren't they in the papal bag? Yeah. Rick Warren, isn't he in the papal bag? Oh, there's numerous videos that I don't, didn't even put in that where Hundreds he is just praising Pope Francis and the Catholic Church. There we go. But and now, is he involved today again in another revival that is taking place exactly. in the United States? Exactly. And, like here, he's promoting all faiths. All he, faiths. He might just as well have been like King Charles, the defender of faith. Because he, like he said, and he mentions it in this interview, Muslim, Buddhist, any religion has to be incorporated. So this is an ecumenical movement like nothing you've ever seen. And are we seeing this ecumenical movement today? Everywhere. All the churches, including unfortunately, some that shouldn't be there are part of this. And our Prince Charles wants to be defender of faith and not defender of the faith. Exactly. Let's see what he does at his coronation. So all of these religious movements are involved. Uh, the United States, the Protestant world, the evangelical world will lead out, mm. but they will have been so manipulated that the ecumenical mindset will be part of it. And anybody, whether they be of any religion out there, whatever it is, that is on the same wavelength when it comes to these moral issues is welcome to join. 
Even, even the Democrat will be very welcome as long as he takes this moral high ground, no matter what religion he supports. Exactly. Or she. Or she. Now, what I just said, Martin, is not uh, conjecture, it's reality. That's it. And here's an interesting case that we're going to talk about now. The mayor of New York. Yeah. Now, New York is a pretty liberal city. And they are moving in this direction, yeah. religious re direction. Now, not in the sense of conservative evangelicalism, no. but everything goes religion. That's a thing. But it's a moral issue. Ah, so, Mr. Remo, who's, who's in control in uh, New York? It's not the Republicans. No, it's the Democrats. The Democrats. So, yeah, interesting what's happening here. So here's the spokesperson for the mayor. She's going to introduce him, and then he's going to speak for himself. Let's hear what they have to say. We know in government, many times it's said that one has to separate church from state. But we have an administration that doesn't believe in that. We have a mayor, who you will hear from shortly, who is definitely one of the chosen. He believes in what the faith-based community can do in partnership with government. He knows that all of the great initiatives throughout the course of our United States, if you look back at our historical plights and the goodness that has happened as a result historically in our country, has always been driven by faith-based initiatives. The creator, had, the creator has so many times to leave me, so many times to abandon me, uh, but she has not. Because <laughs> when we took prayers out of schools, guns came into schools. Ingrid was so right. Don't tell me about no separation of church and state. State is the body, church is the heart. You take the heart out of the body, the body dies. I can't separate my belief because I'm an elected official. When I walk, I walk with God. When I talk, I talk with God. When I put policies in place, I put them in with a God-like approach to them. That's who I am. And I was that when I was that third grader, and I'm going to be that when I leave government. I am still a child of God and will always be a child of God, and I won't apologize about being a child of God. It is not going to happen. And so today we proclaim that this city, New York City, is a place where the mayor of New York is a servant of God. Thank you. Continue to pray for us. All right, Martin, that sounds like a rousing speech, but his God was a she. Yeah, hmm. the creator is a she. The creator is a she, so that's fine. As long as you're with the pendulum, you're okay. And this was an interfaith breakfast or something like that. Um, so it just shows you it's very inclusive. Very inclusive. Okay, so let's see what the New York Times reported on that little discussion. And Martin, this is all very current news, right? This yeah. is what's happening in the world right now. Adams discussing faith dismisses idea of separating church and state. Have we been saying this for a long time? Well, you know, what, you remember the outcry that the liberals had on the liberal, liberal news and all of this about all this Christian nationalism talk Yes. And Boobert that said she's tired of this um, separation of, of church, church and state, and state. junk. Yeah. Now, here we go. All right. So the annual interfaith breakfast hosted on Tuesday by Mayor Eric Adams began normally enough. A choir sang a rousing rendition of My Country, Tis of Thee. A rabbi spoke. So did Buddhist and Muslim leaders. And then things started to get surreal. 
The mayor's closest aide, Ingrid Lewis Martin, the one that we saw in the video introducing him, took the stage to declare that the Adams administration doesn't believe in separation of church and state, characterizing the mayor of New York City as definitely one of the chosen as she introduced him. Don't tell me about no separation of church and state. State is the body, church is the heart. You take the heart out of the body, the body dies. I can't separate my belief because I'm an elected official. He continued over scattered applause. Mr. Adams, who grew up attending a storefront church in Queens, identifies as Christian, but of no particular denomination. He was elected to office with strong basis of support in church-going portions of the Brooklands and Queens, but he also has a lowercase Catholic approach to spirituality and mysticism. He has at least one Buddha statue. He has spoken in earnest about the energy emitted from stones. So he's a mystic, Martin. But Are we told that there is a union between the dragon? which is mysticism, yeah. the beast, which is Catholicism, and the false prophet, which is Protestantism. Do we have a perfect mix there? There you go. Babylonian confusion. So you've got the same problem because you've got Christian yoga, you've got all this Christian mysticism, spiritual formation. This is all part of this nonsense. And you know what's the scary thing? Is the people that should know better, that's part of the remnant, are being sucked in by this. All right, now let me just go back to prophecy. Mm. Babylon consists of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. The dragon represents God the Father. Yeah. In the false trinity. The false one, yes. God the Father. The beast represents the Son. Everybody has to bow down to him. He is the king. He is the one who's crowned, who's got the triple crown on his head. And he's the one that received a mortal wound, 1798, who had a resurrection yes. when Mussolini gave the papal states back. The whole world will wander after him. Every knee will bow. He's the false son. And then you have the false prophet, which represents fallen Protestantism. The three of them together. And ruling, the one who will sit on the throne, all judgment being given unto him will be the beast. Yes. And... And you will have to accept his mark. That's it. And also on the false prophet side, I was just thinking there's a false spirit running. Of course there's a false spirit. And all of them have to come together. Now this mayor seems to have a bit of everything. He has the mysticism, which is dragon worship. He has the Catholicism, which is beast worship. Yep. And he identifies as a non-denominational Christian, which is false prophet. That's it. All of it together. And he believes in the energy emitted from stone. Now you see, so this is how, where it gets scary. Um, even though you can say, well done, Mr. Mayor, because I'm a Christian and I believe what you just said is great. And I want to run with it. It incorporates all these other false things as well. You're going to get a package. Now Martin, we also get the entertainment world into this so let's have a look at the great movie stars of the world and see where this goes Welcome back, everybody. Today is Ash Wednesday, marking the beginning of Lent for many Christians around the world. And it is the reason that Mark Wahlberg is with us this morning. In addition to being an actor, a producer, and an entrepreneur, he is also a guest narrator and paid spokesperson for the Catholic prayer app called Hallow. And this Lenten season, Mark is leading listeners in inspiring lessons on the practice of fasting What's happening with the that, four teens and what, how do you do you talk to them about faith like how do you i always wondered I this as do i just don't again i don't force it on them either like before yeah. it was like all right everybody's got to be in catholic school we got to go to mass every yeah. sunday but that can also you know create some resentment i want them to gravitate towards it in a very natural way yeah. i want them to understand that dad has to start his day by getting on his hands and his knees and no matter where i am the priority on sunday is to go to church yeah. so to be able to do those things and then just see them you know hopefully they'll say well there's got to be something there and let them do it on their own. So for those who are watching who don't understand what Lent is and these ideas about fasting and detachment, 
Talk to them about why they could, whether they're Catholic or not, join in on this challenge. I think we all need to come together, especially after COVID. There's been so much disconnect. People wanting to stay away from each other. And I'm always the person who kind of gravitates towards people. I want to connect with people from all walks of life. And we all need something that's going to bring us together. And, and, and God is the only one that continues to promote nothing but love and inclusion, forgiveness, acceptance, uh, no matter who you are or what your beliefs are. So, yes, this is an opportunity for everybody to come together and start to pray and hopefully make the world a better place. Earlier this year, Mark Wahlberg's passion project, Father Stew, a redemptive tale of a roustabout who finds God and ends up saving his family in the process. It made a huge splash at the box office. Well, now in an unorthodox move, Sony is bringing the movie back to theaters at the top of December in a new form. They call it Father Stew Reborn. Joining me to discuss is the film star and producer, Mark Wahlberg. Now, this is an odd move, Mark, to release a movie in the same year it was originally released. Why did you and the studio decide to do it this way? Well, given the nature of the, the R-rated movie, uh, lots of families didn't feel comfortable uh, with their children seeing it, but they really wanted them to get the message. So um, because the Archbishop, uh, Archbishop Thomas of Nevada, who had actually ordained Father Stu uh, in Helena, Montana, came to me and said, Mark, I really understand why the language is there, but it would be a sin and a shame for young people not to see this movie and to really understand the importance of this story. Mm. So we we wanted to make sure that we could share that with children of all ages. And so we recut the film. We took out all 200 and some odd swears. <laughs> and the film is st still as powerful and as impactful. Martin, would you be happy to take part in a movie where you have to cuss and swear 200 times to make it realistic? I believe, like he said in the end, it was taken out and it still had the same. It was still the same. It's still you don't the same have to message. go that route. No, you can't go that route. But he also said it doesn't matter what religion you belong to as long as you bring the spirituality back in, right? You see, that's, that's why I think it's important to know, to see this. Look at where religion is already now taking big hold. Hollywood. But which religion? They all go, everything goes. God loves everybody. He does love everybody, but he has certain criteria. And if you do certain things, if you follow certain rituals, then you are deemed to be a religious person. Oh, that is so true. So the man is propagating Lent, 40 days of fasting. Now, the fast is not the total fast, of course. No, Lent. It's not food. It's not no, but you food. abstain from that which you normally like to eat, etc. It's, it's actually interesting. I didn't put that part in. He was mentioning that if it's it, it, that fast can be something that you know is not really right, and then you just fast from it for this 40 days. For 40 days. So, now, actually, what are you going then back to it? No, you see, it's a very now, loose thing. Now, the Protestant principle is Jesus paid the price, he's the fulfillment of the law. Mm -hmm. uh, because Jesus fasted 40 days. Does that mean I must now fast 40 days? Yeah. Or is that salvation by works? I think it's salvation. All right. So this idea of fasting 40 days seems to be a universal thing. Islam has Ram Ramadan. Uh, we're supposed to have faith in Jesus and in his completed works. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that we do not have to obey and live decent lives because if you love me, keep my commandments. But these are work-based things which create the impression that you are religious. It's interesting that he also appeared with the Ash Wednesday cross on, on his forehead. Mm. He's making a statement. And he's part of Jesuit theater, which is Hollywood. So Hollywood is involved. Sports is involved. The churches are involved. The governments are involved. The militaries are involved. Everything that the Bible says the King of the North will do is involved. So Let me read it to you. I, I cannot resist <laughs> it. It's good.
Let's turn to Daniel chapter 11, verse 40. Almost there. And at the time of the end, now we've discussed that, right? And we've concluded mm -hmm. from the scriptures that that started in 1798. Yes. When the papacy received the mortal wound and the political power of the papacy was taken away. Yes. In other words, it could no longer be church and state. Yes. And since that time, church and state has been separate. Mm -hmm. The consequences are total chaos. We have the woke movement. We have everything that goes along with it. And people are beginning to say it doesn't work, exactly. separation of church and state. And it started with the French Revolution. Yes. With secularism taking yes. over and throwing out religion. Correct. And Napoleon invaded Rome, took away the secular power of the papacy. So at the time of the end shall the king of the south, which is secularism, take away the power. And the king of the north, this will be the retaliation, shall come against him. So the table will be turned. The pendulum will swing towards secularism with its woke agenda, as we can now see. Mm. And then the king of the north will come against him. Now he's leading a religious movement. He's the beast power, the king of the north. north yeah. So he is the false son. He's the antichrist. Mm. And he is the one that will lead the movement with the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet mm. by his side. That's and we've seen it. Everything there, everything in the in the mayor of New York. Against him like a whirlwind with chariots. Is that war. the military? Yes. Do we have threats of war on this moral issue with Putin saying we will defend the moral high ground? That's the same. And the Bible and the holy books of mm. the world. He didn't exclude the other religious systems. And with horsemen. Pardon, does that include the military? Yep. Yes. And with many ships, does that include the economy? That's it. That includes the economy. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. Are all countries involved? And he shall enter into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall escape out of his hand. And then it mentioned Edom and Moab and the children of Ammon. Because in the last days, out of all of the nations of the world, they've been pressing into the Christian That's it. Uh, church. And God has his people and they are still in Babylon. Yes, so this um, is the religious part. And the people must notice and discern what is deception and what is truth. And once they understand it, they will say, we cannot be part of this movement because this is the false movement. We have to come out. Now let's see where this is heading because this is getting very exciting. Yes. So let's go to the Great Revival yeah. because we're not going to have a popular movement unless we have a Great Revival. So all of this that we've just seen, it's actually leading to this. It's leading <laughs> to this. All right, here's the Detroit Catholic reporting on the great Asbury revival. Jesus was right next to me. Asbury revival sets Catholics on fire with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a Methodist institution. Yeah. But the Catholics are on fire. So this is important. So we have the false prophet and we have the beast. The beast. A Kentucky university has become ground zero for what thousands are calling a mysterious move of the Holy Spirit. The local Catholics told OSV News the experience has been profound. It's almost like a wellspring, said Father Norman Fisher, pastor of the St. Peter Claver Church in Lexington, Kentucky, and chaplain at Lexington's Catholic High School. You just know right away that God is there. Since February 8, a routine morning chapel gathering at Asbury University, a Christian liberal arts university located in Wilmore, Kentucky, has blossomed into a round-the-clock session of prayer, praise, worship, and testimonials. 
area Catholic parishes are looking to see how they can cultivate the same, especially as the Catholic Church in the U.S. enters the second year of the National Eucharist Revival, which will include the 10th National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, July 21-24, 2024. Martin, things are heading in a direction, right? It's amazing. You've got a charismatic revival, conservative revival, and you've even got a, a Eucharist revival. And this uh, is all under the banner of Christian. Now, just saying that you can feel it is mm. here. Martin, can you base your faith on feeling? The heart is deceivable above all things. Uh -huh. I think there is truly a way to tie this to the Eucharist revival. Can you take part in the Eucharist? No. The self-same sacrifice has happened on the cross. Was Jesus' sacrifice not efficacious? No. You know what? To do a Eucharist revival or anything to do with the Eucharist is like hitting the rock twice like Moses did. And they're hitting it a thousand mm. millions of times. But there's got to be a willingness to be open to the Holy Spirit who can say, I don't want to be finished at 8 p.m., said Father Fisher. Can your church handle that? Is it willing? Now, there have been many things written and said about the Ashbury revival. So let's just sum it up in a video and see what the various role players say. Because yeah. there are, of course, many prophets that have been proven to say incorrect things mm. in the past but are still considered to be prophets. And they're saying that this revival is the beginning of what must happen in the entire world. Yes. Right. They actually, uh, most of these people believe that this is the fire that's going to lit up this whole world revival. All right. Let's have a look at it. It's quite lengthy, but it's worth watching. Today we are in Wilmore, Kentucky to witness an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is taking place on the campus of Asbury University. And what he showed me was what this revival would look like, this blowing of the breath again intensely. I saw the fire of God coming to the youth of our nation, the young people, campuses, college campuses. The fires of revival began to burn, completely grassroots, completely spontaneous, led by no person, controlled by no person, planned by no person. God just began to hover over these universities. I listened to these testimonies and something strange happened. The spirit that is in Asbury started getting on me. And I remember I went to go do a broadcast two days ago, and I felt so solemn, so quiet, so muted. I realized that that presence of conviction was already working on me. And this is just from being exposed to the viral nature of the revival that is happening. Now, here's what I found out. The last time this happened at Asbury was 1970, uh, February 1970. Ironically, it's, uh, it was right after the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. So the Kansas City, and I'm not connecting these two as an act of God. I'm saying how weird these coincidences are. So Kansas City wins the Super Bowl the same time that revival breaks out at Asbury. The Asbury revival, is, as Dutch said, went to 130 different universities. But this is important because already, including Ohio and, and down here in Austin, different campuses are telling me they're having a similar outpouring of the Spirit of God. And what's, uh, what's interesting about that is I just got a text from uh, Bert Lindsay who tells me the 1948 Lateran movement started on Valentine's Day, on this day, to, you know, on Valentine's Day in uh, 1940, 75 years later, 2023, Valentine's Day is right in the middle of the revival again. So here we are 75 years later, the latter rain outpouring started on this day. So I'm thinking we're at a divine convergence. This is just the beginning. This nation is. is so ripe. It is so, their people are so desperate. They are so ready for change. The enemy has overplayed his hand. People are scared to death. They're in fear. They're in turmoil. They're worried about their kids now. They're worried about their money. It's just like the 70s. 
with the riots and the, and the right. civil rights movement and the young people that were so upset with the establishment. We're there again. There's this desperation. America and other parts of the world is, is ripe for a revival and it's coming. We've come to a fullness of time. We've come to a horaeus, right time. 50 years ago, something extraordinary happened on one college campus. We need him to change their hearts so that they can change the direction of our nation. We're asking you, please join us. Join us for this day of prayer. Join us in praying for these young people. Believe that God can usher in something new through the power of our prayers. Join us on February 23rd, live from Asbury University. Lord, do it again. There's this church, it's called Calvary Chapel. When we say we're looking for truth, what if this is true? Because everything that we've been trying it's not working for me. I just can't be lying down again. What I felt in there, I haven't... What if it's good for a minute and then it's gone? What then? We can find out together. Country is a dark and divided place. But in that tent, there's hope and unity and miracles that I can't even explain. I was having a, a sort of a late night and I sat in my living room and I was thinking, Jeez, I want to do something that actually has some value hmm. beyond just the fact that I'm doing another role or uh, something that uh, I enjoy playing. And uh, the very next morning, this script was delivered to my house. If, if you feel like you're an outcast, then join us here. If you Ephraim Graham, like CBN News, Los Angeles. Misunderstood and judged. What a wonderful trip down memory lane for me. I remember this. I remember the Jesus Revolution. I remember all the turmoil of the 1960s. Well, also just something interesting. Almost every one of the um, speakers and news people here said that they, were, they are a result of the 1970 Asbury revival. All right. Now... How involved is Hollywood? Oh, didn't we see, we started with Mark Wahlberg. Look at this. Now we've got Kelsey Grammer. We've got it, the actors that uh, play the roles of Jesus involved in all of these Yeah, the things. roles of Jesus in The Chosen. And there are many, many clips that are going out now with those same actors. And, and remember, most of them are Catholic, right? Bringing the world together. And this is a massive movement. Martin, what if this is the final movement, the final gathering of Babylon, and people don't know it? Isn't that a horrendous deception? Yeah, yeah. It's scary? It is. And let's read from the great controversy. But many of the revivals of modern times have presented a marked contrast to those manifestations of divine grace which in earlier days followed the labors of God's servants. What was the watchword of Peter? Repent. Yes. Repent. They were cut to the heart. They realized that they were not living up to God's expectations. They'd crucified the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Now they're doing it together with Eucharistic celebrations, which crucified the Son of God over and over, over. and over again. And Peter was speaking to his fellow disciples as well. Because when they... When Jesus was sacrificed, they were also not repented yet. They actually. hadn't understood the issue. It is true that a widespread interest is kindled. Many profess conversions and there are large accessions to the churches. Nevertheless, the results are not such as to warrant the belief that there has been a corresponding increase of real spiritual life. The light which flames up for a time soon dies out, leaving the darkness more dense than before. The same influences have been at work to a greater or less degree that will be manifest in the most extensive movements of the future. There is an emotional excitement, a mingling of the true with the false, that is well adapted to mislead. Do we see this? This, this could have been written today. It is so brilliant. 
How someone cannot see the inspiration in this boggles my mind. Yet none may need be deceived. Martin, as soon as you discern through the scriptures one drop, just one little drop of error. Now, with the Asbury revival, how involved was the LGBTQ, uh, I forgot the I, plus movement? Very much, actually. There are videos that shows that it's actually what initiated it. Uh huh. And it's a spirituality because it incorporates anything error plus truth, Catholicism plus Protestantism plus mysticism, everything goes. As long as you have the feeling, as long as you have the spirit. Martin, the word is the norm. That's it. Nothing There's else. no other standard. There's not the spirit is above the word. Because that's where, where most of these things start making a trouble for you. So let's read what she says further. In the light of God's word, it is not difficult to determine the nature of these movements. So what happens? The word is left aside. It has to be. And the spirit takes over. And then it's a feeling and not er, thus says the Lord. You come from that movement. Yeah. You were in that movement. Wherever men neglect the testimony of the Bible, turning away from those plain soul-testing truths which require self-denial and renunciation of the world, there we may be sure that God's blessing is not bestowed. And by the rule which Christ himself has given, ye shall know them by their fruits. It is evident that these movements are not the work of the Spirit of God. Worship with the bedlam of noise. The things you have described as taking place in Indiana, the Lord has shown me would take place just before the close of probation. When, Martin? Just before that day. Every uncouth thing will be demonstrated. There will be shouting with drums, music, dancing. The senses of rational beings will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. And this is called the moving of the Holy Spirit. Now, we didn't show the videos of all the testimonies, no. where the people are giving these emotional testimonies. And the LGBTs are involved, and anything goes. Sin together with non-sin, everything is in the in the mix. That, and you must remember, people were flying from New Zealand, from all over the world to attend. And no matter what you believe, and no matter what gender you ascribe yourself to, you receive this Spirit. Yeah. So can the Spirit be from God? No. Cannot be. The Holy Spirit never reveals itself in such methods, in such a bedlam of noise. This is an invention of Satan to cover up his ingenious methods of making of non-effect the pure, sincere, elevating, ennobling, sanctifying truth for this time. Better never have the worship of God blended with music than to use musical instruments to do the work which last January was represented to me would be brought into our camp meetings. The truth for this time needs nothing of this kind in its work of converting souls. Warning bells, are we in our denomination subject to the same influences? Absolutely. Are we in the same danger? We are even more in danger. Do many fall into the same trap? Exactly. Let's look at what happened in our institutions, where secular stars come into the, our institutions and sing, make a bedlam of noise, shout their ears off as if they're speaking to Baal who has lost his hearing, and then tell us it doesn't matter whether you worship on a Thursday or Friday or Saturday or whatever. And the sad thing is, ew, we're yeah. going crazy about it. And everybody says hallelujah. Abomination. I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. I'm an agnostic. I'm a... You can't make me down, know too much about them. But y'all be having, y'all be having services on Saturday and stuff. You can't make me down them. Cause the same God over Saturday is the same God over every day. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor, make sure they hear say, pick your Sabbath, pick your Sabbath. 
pick it, pick it, because you can't make me doubt him. If you got to do it on Monday, keep it. No too much help out of Martin, are we in the same danger? Should we know better? We should know better. It's a very sad state of affairs. I was once, I mean, I've told the story many times, maybe it fits. I was in one of our large churches in the United States of America. And I was supposed to speak. And uh, the pastor was not very happy for me to speak, but the youth had invited me. And uh, the youth pastor actually appeared on the stage with an earring in one ear, hanging down to here, his shirt buttoned open to here with an electric guitar around his neck. And I thought, where am I? It was an Adventist church in the United States of America, a very large one with a very prominent mm -hmm. pastor. And they gave me 10 minutes. And uh, I told my story and stopped it at a high point and said, sorry, I can't tell you anymore, I only have 10 minutes. So the students went crazy and uh, insisted I speak longer. I said, I cannot. The pastor said I may not speak longer. He insisted I may not speak longer. <laughs> and so they made such a raucous that eventually he capitulated and I spoke for one and a half hours. <laughs> And you, you can barely give an intro in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the Lord has a sense of humor. No, for sure. And it was, of course, a massive drum set on the stage, etc. And one of the students asked me, publicly there in front of everybody, what do I think about these this musical instruments? I mean, I've told this before. You've probably heard it before. And I said, I'm delighted to see them and carried on with my lecture. They were totally stunned. And then about 15 minutes later or whatever, I said, uh, you're probably wondering why I said, I'm delighted to see them. I'm delighted to see them, I said, because the spirit of prophecy says, just before the close of probation, drums will come into the Adventist church. Therefore, I'm delighted to see them because it means we're going home soon. That's it. Well, we've actually read that um citation just before this video correct are, are we there we're there we're there now it's even worse <sighs> so god's people please wake up to the law and to the testimony they keep the commandments of god and hold to the testimony you have the truth why do you live next to it please wake up and if i also can add on to this please we are now supposed to stand apart. Yes. Don't look like the world. We and don't climb onto the bandwagon. Be an observer, but be an observer from right principles. Absolutely. A bedlam of noise shocks the senses and perverts that which is conducted aright might be a blessing. Now that superstar who was running around bent over like a chicken that had just lost its head shouting his head off. Wasn't that a bezlem of noise? And what was his message? Doesn't matter whether you worship on a Saturday or yeah. any other day, right? Directly speaking against the Word of God and people in the Adventist church cheer. Cheer. And that is inside of an Adventist church where you proclaim that 
God set aside the seventh day, the Saturday. But now, this now that that uh, jamboree that they had there was that any different from Asbury? No, we've showed a while back in Europe. It, it, it's it's sad. This is really sad. We are doing this not to bash the church. No, we are trying to show people, please. Start waking. Start, start to wake up. Waking up now in Germany. This has been happening for years. They even have competitions as to which band can shout the loudest and then give them uh, accolades for it. Yeah. And uh, that's not the church. Yeah. That's a fallen leadership within the church. God has a church within this within church, this. and there will be a shaking. So hopefully these people will make right decisions and turn their hearts back to the fathers and come back to the Lord. Or else they will leave the church and join up with the Asperies and the other revivals and they will no longer be part of the remnant. Yes, and a lot of people that are part of those revivals will start waking up and take your place. They will take that place, yeah. The powers of satanic agencies blend with the din and the noise to have a carnival, and this is termed the Holy Spirit's working. When the camp meeting is ended, the good which ought to have been done and which might have been done by the presentation of sacred truth is not accomplished. Those participating in the supposed revival receive impressions which lead them adrift. They cannot tell what they formerly knew regarding Bible principles. No encouragement should be given to this kind of worship. The same kind of influence came in after the passing of the time in 1844. The same kind of representations were made. Men became excited, were worked by a power thought to be the power of God. Notwithstanding the widespread declension of faith and piety, there are true followers of Christ in these churches. And let's make that point quite clear yes. again. In those revivals, I have no doubt there are many sincere Christians. But when they get confronted with the Word, they must choose the Word over their feelings. And when they do that, and when they live up to the light that they have, God will call them out and they will take the place of those that are within our denomination that refuse to accept the light which they've had all these years. That is so true. And another thing, who's going to take this to them? It's our responsibility, our viewers and everybody listening to this. We've got a responsibility. We have a responsibility. We have to take this out to them. Before the final visitation of God's judgments upon the earth, there will be amongst the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. That is why it is essential that we look at the spiritual aspects. We cannot only look at this. We have to look at the spiritual aspect and what has to happen inside here. You see, and then you will distinguish which is true and false revival. The Spirit and the power of God will be poured out upon His children. At that time, many will separate themselves from those churches in which the love of this world has supplanted love for God and His Word. Just by looking at the mix of what is clearly sin in the Bible, being accepted as norm within these movements, mm. must make people think. Many, both of ministers and people, will gladly accept those great truths which God has caused to be proclaimed at this time to prepare a people for the Lord's second coming. The enemy of souls desires to hinder this work, and before the time of such a movement shall come, he will endeavor to prevent it by introducing a counterfeit. Is he doing it? Oh, this is what we should realize. The world is getting into our church, we have to make a bulwark. And we have to stand for what is right. Exactly. His counterfeit is running, is on the right as we speak, busy running. It appears that God's special blessing is poured out. There will be manifest what is thought to be great religious interest. Multitudes will exalt. 
that God is working marvelously for them when the work is that of another spirit under a religious guise, Satan will seek to extend his influence over the Christian world and this denomination. Yeah. Martin, may God help us to wake up, to see and discern the times in which we are living. And may God's people remember where they came from. Remember the pillars of our faith. Remember the message that we have been given. Not to partake in this, but to warn against it. To warn against the mark of the beast. To warn against this false system of worship. The three angels' messages are about worship. Worship him who made, not worship him who has this inclusive agenda which incorporates sin and righteousness in the same package. It cannot be. May God's people wake up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are living at the very edge of time and soon there will be a massive religious revival worldwide leading people to perdition. Then there will come a shaking and there will come an outpouring of the true Holy Spirit with a loud voice proclaiming, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. Help us to be part of the true revival. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.